Hi everyone! Today I wanted to show you some tips that really helped me with my hand lettering. Now I'm definitely not a pro at this, I've been doing it about a year, but I wanted to make this video while the things that really helped me were still fresh in my mind. So the easiest way to do lettering is what some people like to call folligraphy, where you just write a word out in cursive just like this, and you don't need to know how to do the breast strokes. So just go through and on each letter, the parts where the pen is going downwards, thicken up the line, and where the pen is going upwards, keep it thin. The great thing about this is you can use just about any regular marker for this. I'm using a Sharpie here just to show you that you do not need a brush tip to do this. And this is great because anyone can do this without having any experience doing brush lettering and you still kind of get a similar look. So that's it for the folligraphy. Now I just want to quickly go over kind of a basic anatomy of the letters that you might find helpful when you're doing hand lettering. I suggest using graph paper or lined paper for this, but draw two lines. The top line is the X height, and the bottom line is the base line. Then draw a line above the X height, and a line below the base line. The very top line is the ascender line, and the very bottom line is the descender line. So to show you with the lettering, a letter like the letter A will just stay between the X height and the base line. The letter B will go up to the ascender line on the looped part. The letter C will stay in the middle, and the letter D will go up to the ascender line again. A letter like the letter G will go down to the descender line. So by now you can probably see how this works. It's a guideline to keep things even and consistent from letter to letter. When you're using a brush pen, you can get a feel for how much pressure it takes to make a fine line or a thicker line. And I just suggest practicing that for a little while. Just seeing how much pressure you need to use to get the different line width. The other thing you need to get a feel for is the angle at which you're holding the pen. This is really important because you can't be changing the angle as you're writing to get thicker or thinner lines. So just find an angle that works for you that will allow you to get both of those line widths easily. And I'm holding it probably at about 45 degrees. Another thing that a lot of people like to do to practice lettering are drills. This is something that would be great to do on graph paper to keep them consistent, but just kind of draw a shape like this where you're practicing the thin upstrokes and the thick downstrokes and continuously going between the two. It can also be helpful to pick out a certain letter and just try writing that over and over. And this will help you get the feel for the thinner and thicker strokes, which does take some time to get used to. And the letter S here is quite a bit more challenging than a C, so just try different letters and find things that really help you improve. Another thing that really helped me in the beginning was the idea that this isn't just writing cursive. So if I go through and I write the word cursive, I'm just doing it pretty much all in one stroke, so I'm not picking up the pen at all. And you'll end up with something like that, which if that's the look you're going for, that's great. But to me, brush lettering is more about creating shapes than it is about writing in cursive. So the important thing to remember here is to slow down. If you write too fast, you'll probably find yourself going into autopilot and just writing in cursive, but in this case you want to break each letter down into different movements. You don't want one continuous movement for the whole word. Think about the shapes that form each letter and slow down enough that you can think about how you want to do each of the shapes. And this is really helpful also for making the word just look better overall because you'll be able to decide where you want to position each letter as you're writing the word in a way that will keep things balanced. So take your time and think of the letters more as shapes than as handwriting. So here I'm just showing you that I've broken the G down into two distinct shapes. So I have the round part and then the descender. And once you've finished writing the word, you can go through and add the crossbars like on the T's and dot the I's. Another thing to keep in mind as you're finding your lettering style, 
is keeping your letters consistent versus adding bounce to them. So if you think back to the type anatomy that we talked about at the beginning of this video, you have the baseline, where is kind of the line where each of the letters start at. So the bottom of the C and the bottom of the O and the bottom of the N, that's all right on the baseline. If you want to keep it consistent, keep them all on the same line. But if you want, you can add some bounce. So I wrote the B a little lower, and then I raised up the O, now writing the U lower again, and raised up the N. So I'm keeping the B and the U on the same line and the O and the N on the same line and alternating on each letter higher and lower. And this just keeps it so the word is balanced if you alternate back and forth. And this is just one way to give your lettering a different style or feel. One of the biggest tips I can give you is to find other hand lettering artists who have a style that you really love. I went on Instagram and Pinterest and found lots of great people there, and I'll link some of my favorites in the description for you to look at as well. You don't want to copy anyone, but just look at the way that they write different letters and pick and choose from lots of different people certain styles or ways to write a certain letter. This will help you develop your style and just learn how to write each letter. You may or may not be familiar with the sentence that I'm writing here, which is the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This sentence has every letter in the alphabet, so it's a really good way to practice all of your letters, especially the ones that you don't come across as often, like X's and Z's. Another tip that kind of goes along with the drills that we talked about earlier is if you have a certain letter that you have trouble with, first look at the way the other people write it, and then just try practicing it over and over. P is a letter that I definitely struggle with and one that I practice with on its own. And for a lot of letters, there's multiple ways that you can write them. And just looking at the way other people write them, you can kind of see the different ways. And a lot of times there's a, a style that will just work better for you. So now that we've talked about a lot of lettering tips, I'm going to show you some different pens that I use and the styles that you can get with them. The pink one is a Tombow dual brush pen. This blue one is a Pentel Aquash brush in medium. This black one is a Prismacolor brush tip marker. The purple one is a Pentel Feud Touch sign pen. And this last one is a Pentel Pigment Ink color brush. So these are the Pentel Aquash water brushes and they come in three sizes. This is the small, the medium, and the large. And these are the first thing I used when I started doing lettering. And I used a medium tip brush and I will link all of these supplies in the description, so if you're looking for them, you can find them. And I'm using these low Cornell watercolors. And the trick here is to take some of the watercolor out of the container it comes in and put it in one of these spots on the other side of the container and just water it down there. I found that that makes it a lot easier to work with and less chalky. So just keep mixing it until it seems like a good consistency. And now I'm just going to show you the lines that you can get with these water brushes and the way the lettering looks with them. Now this is the medium tip brush. Now the tip on this is pretty soft. It doesn't take much pressure to create a thicker line. So it's a little bit harder to get the thinner lines and you probably won't be creating super small letters with this brush. Now the next brush I'm showing you is the small aquash brush. So as you can see, it's a little easier to create thinner lines. You have a little bit more control over it, and your letters will end up being a little bit smaller than with the medium brush. This next one is the large aquash brush. And this one you definitely will be creating letters that are much larger than with the other two. With this brush you can create some really thick lines and it's good if you're doing larger lettering. So here's a look at all three of the sizes to get a comparison. Now this is the Tombow dual brush pen. It has the brush tip on one end and then this smaller fine point marker on the other. Now even though I started with the Pentel Aquash brush, I think I would recommend starting with this one first because I've found that the end is a bit firmer in these and so that gives you a little more control over the thickness of the line. 
But here's just a look at the style that you can get with these. And then comparing it with the others. This next one is the Prismacolor Brush Tip Marker. And this came in a set. And this has a small brush tip, as you can see. And it has quite a bit of firmness, so that will give you a lot of control over the thickness of the line, but also make it so you have to press a lot harder to get a thicker line. And the letters end up being quite a bit smaller with this one, as you can tell. And this next one is the Pentel Feud Touch Sign Pen. This has a pretty small end on it, as you can see. But it still has enough flex that you can create a thinner and a thicker line. This is one of my favorite pens at the moment. It gives you a lot of control, but at the same time you can still create a thicker and a thinner line. And this one also creates fairly small letters, as you can see. And then this last one is the Pentel Pigment Ink Color Brush. This is a lot like the Pentel Aquash brushes, but it comes with its own permanent ink inside. As you can see here, compared, they're pretty similar. So something to note about this one is that you can use it with watercolors. Because the ink is permanent, it won't bleed. It will stay exactly as you wrote it. So here's a demonstration of what this pen can do. Something that I definitely noticed about this one is that you don't always get a consistent line out of it. If you squeeze it first, you can get more of a consistent line, but a lot of times you'll have kind of these little spaces and gaps. And if that's the look you're going for, this would probably be a good choice for you. But in my experience, this is a bit more challenging to use than the other pen choices I'm showing you here. So here I'm just showing you how you can get a thick and thinner line and how you get kind of that dry brush look with gaps and not just a consistent stroke. So another tip for your lettering is if you're having trouble, a lot of times on those upstrokes, because they're thinner and less pressure, they can become kind of wobbly because you have to lift the pen up more. And if you're having trouble with that, just really flick the upstrokes and do them quickly instead of slow like this, and you'll get a more consistent, less wobbly line. Something that I found really helpful is to just sit and write lots of names. You can just write random names that you think of or names of people you know, and just practice writing those, and that will help you learn how to connect different letters to each other and just practice all of the letters. And if you ever need to write your friend's names, you're good because you've already practiced them. The last tip and something that's really important is to just practice, practice, practice. I wouldn't say that practice makes perfect, because I don't think hand lettering is ever perfect and that's actually what makes it fun, I think. But practice does make progress. So just keep practicing, even if it feels like you're not getting better, you definitely are. And as you practice, you will develop your own style. And that's it for my tips for hand lettering. I hope something in this video was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more from my channel, you can click any of the things on screen and I hope you have a great day.